Hi, welcome to Storytime in the Pollinator Garden. I'm Pam from Lincoln City Libraries, and this is Courtney and Sheldon from the University of Nebraska Bee Lab. We've teamed up to bring your family some exciting and interesting information about pollinators. Hopefully, you can use this information to help pollinators in your part of the world. So, what do we got? So, this is your normal, what's called a Langstroth honey beehive. So, it's named after a guy whose last name was Langstroth. He actually pioneered removable frames. And what we mean by removable frames, we'll okay. show you. But all beehives, if they're in a tree somewhere in the wild, those frames can't come out. Okay. And usually the bees will kind of zigzag around and they make um, kind of your normal TV looking honeycombs. Yep. But these are gonna be all straight and they'll be able to be removed so that we can actually process honey, check on the health of the bees and move these boxes around. Okay. And these are also great because the design allows for a lot of space for those bees to, we can fit 10 frames inside of here. So then you get a nice big hive and then okay. you can actually move these things around all over the country to do pollination of apple orchards and okay. almonds. Okay. All these fruits and veggies that people love, we actually will truck bees in from all over, plop them down in the middle of these orchards and then those bees can go out and pollinate. Okay, okay. so that's a big business for some people. It is, okay. it's some people's entire livelihood. So when you hear about bee populations and struggling, that affects people's jobs when that happens. So. Okay, but these are just hives like you could have in your backyard um, anybody could do this though. Yep, and that's the great thing. So because they're not all mobile, you can actually have bees in your backyard. You don't have to move them around. They can actually overwinter in this box. Bees don't hibernate. So in the winter, they, when they fill this whole thing with honey, they'll actually start at the bottom in a big ball and they'll be nice and tight. And then they'll munch, munch, munch all the way up until spring. Okay. They'll be at the top. Okay. And then hopefully by that time there's blooms and then they'll kind of break the cluster and they'll go out and find some forage. Okay. But in the winter, they are literally just hanging out in here all winter long, vibrating their muscles and staying warm. Okay. They don't hibernate like bumblebees and a lot of solitary native bees do. Okay. They're, they're hanging out all winter. Okay. Very cool. Shall we, shall we peek inside? Yeah. So we're going to open it up and right here, I've got a smoker. So, Smokers, as long as you're not using some sort of uh, chemical accelerant, they shouldn't irritate the bees. So okay. when people think of like the bee movie or something like that, they think, well, the smoke makes the bees sad. It makes them lethargic and, and it hurts them. Well, huh, what smoke actually does is it makes them think that there's a fire nearby. Okay. And then they're going to go down and they're going to start munching on honey in case they need to leave. If they okay. end up not leaving. When the smoke clears, then they'll, okay. They'll put the honey back away. Huh. Okay. So what that's going to do for the beekeeper, for me, is it's actually more important for me to keep those bees away from where I'm working. All right. By smoking them a little bit than it is if I didn't smoke them and then they get irritated and they fly everywhere and then they might get crushed if I'm moving things around. So it's right. better for me and the bees when I smoke them. Okay. So we're going to open up the hive. And for this part, we're going to Make sure we suit up so they don't fly in our face. Right. Make sure when you're working bees, the reason we wear white is not because that's a bee's favorite color. We wear it because if you wear anything that's dark or fuzzy, bees will think you're a bear and then they'll sting you. <laughs> okay. So any dark colors, um, you also want to take off any jewelry that might pinch if you get stung and something swells up. So I only wear rubber jewelry or nothing at all. So we're gonna open up this top and this is a feeder. So we're feeding bees right now. So I'm okay. gonna remove the feeder and that's just what we give them. After we take their honey, we give them a little bit of sugar and then they eat that sugar water and make more honey. So here's some bees. Oh. So they've kind of made a little comb there. Yeah, they have. They're, uh, sometimes they get a little bit bored and they'll, they fill any crack they can with. Sure. So. We've opened up the hive and you can see that, that any space, there was a just maybe a quarter inch of space between the feeder. They've already filled it with this comb. So okay. I'm gonna scrape some of that off. Later I'll get rid of it, but you can actually see that beautiful wax and they even put a little bit of sugar water oh, that we fed sure. them. They took that sugar water and made it into honey. So okay. they're all over the place. And it's pretty cool that they're making this much wax this late in the year. So what I'm gonna do is next, I'm gonna 
pry out a frame and show you guys all the hard work that these bees have been doing. So I've, you can see I've smoked them out of the way. And the other thing, other than wax and honey and pollen in a hive is what's called propolis. I was just going to ask about that because that makes it hard to get the, oh, yeah. the frames out. Especially when it's a little chilly. But propolis is tree resin. And so I always like to tell people that even trees that don't make flowers that make me honey like a linden tree, well, those are important, but also it's important to have cottonwoods and stuff that don't make flowers because guess where they get that propolis from? Okay. They'll go and those resiny trees like cottonwoods and uh, poplars and stuff like that, they'll go and collect resin off of those. Even evergreens like spruce, they'll collect the resin off of them. They don't, do they have to, how do they collect it? Like, do they eat it or do they chew it, like chew it or do they just so bury it? Each bee has a job. So if okay. you ever see a bee that's got pollen pants on, yep. that's what we like to call them when they've yep. got pollen. Yep. Her only job is to collect pollen. Okay. If she doesn't have pollen pants on, she probably has her gut full of nectar. Okay. So she's a honey a nectar collector. Right. Uh, and then there's another one. If you see something dark on there, on their, uh, they're called pollen baskets on their legs, yeah. but it's not pollen. Those are actually, their job is to collect resin for propolis. Yeah, so I'm gonna scrape off all this. It's called burr comb. It's gonna get in the way of all of my winter feeding and when I close them up for the winter. So it's called burr comb because it's the stuff that's not straight and it's kind of in the way. So I'm gonna scrape that all off and then it's out of my way for the winter. I can't use it and it kind of just gunks up the hive. Some people leave it, but it's anytime there's a space, they'll put burr comb in there. Sure. All right, let's see if I can get a J hook in there. Yeah, there we go. All right, so I'm gonna remove this frame. Normally I don't remove them from the middle, but there's my bees and they're gonna be hanging out on this frame. And right there, you can actually see that they're raising brood, which is baby bees. That's gonna look a lot different than this honey. So here's my honey. If I poke it, you'll see the liquid come out. And right here, it looks like cardboard. That's actually my baby bees. Okay. Think of them like a pupa of a butterfly. They're going to be pupating inside of here and then they'll emerge. And then those will be the adult bees that we're okay. seeing walking all over. Okay. So in the fall, this is going to be smaller because they don't want to make so many to have to feed through the winter. Correct? Exactly. And okay. the ones that are made in the fall, they're going to be a little physiologically different because they're the ones that live the longest. Right. Bees in the summer live about two weeks because they work themselves so hard. Okay. Bees that are, we call them the fat bees, the winter bees, nice and chubby. They will actually live from late fall all the way to early spring because okay. they've got to get the hive through the winter. Okay. And so they're a little bit, they have more fat bodies and they have, they live a little bit longer. So right there you can see there's all my bees. And also right here, you can see what's called bee bread. Okay. And so bee bread is basically pollen mixed with a little bit of nectar uh -huh. and digestive enzymes. And okay. so it's called bread because it's like it ferments almost. And that's what they'll eat and then feed the babies, which look like little larvae. They look like little worms okay. in the bottom of the cell. Okay. So they'll feed those little larvae, those little C-shaped worms, and then those will develop into the pupa we're seeing here. Okay. So in so, order to make babies, they need pollen. Okay. So it's not, so it's the older bees that eat the honey and then the, the babies get fed the bee bread. Yep. Okay. Through their sisters. So their right. sisters so eat the eat bee it. bread okay. and then they'll actually secrete okay. this white liquid called brood food. Okay. And so it's a very complex process, but eventually, yes, that's how they get it. The okay. pollen you can think of as their protein, their meat, they're vegetarians, you know, so mm -hmm. they eat, all of their protein is from plants. And okay. then 
their carbohydrates are the nectar. Okay. And so that's sure. their sugar, that's their energy. They're, that's how they get their uh, short-term reserve energy. Okay. Is that decent? Mm -hmm. There's a bee so I killed, so. Is there, there's only one queen for this whole hive though, correct? Yes, there's only one queen for the whole hive. When there's more than one queen, half of the hive will leave and that's called a swarm. Okay. And so half the hive will leave with either the old queen or sometimes they'll send out two swarms and they'll leave, but they'll always leave a queen in here, but they only do that once a year usually. Okay. So they'll create a bunch of new queens. The old queen will leave, the new queens will duke it out and fight, and then only one will survive and she'll be the new queen of that colony. Okay. And so that's usually happening in the spring. And when they leave, they'll go hang on a tree branch and then they'll scout for new homes. Okay. And those are, that's called a swarm. And the cool thing is about, swarm, it, about swarms is you can actually shake the branch and they'll fall into a new box and you can put them in and have a new hive. So if you find a swarm, you should call a beekeeper that you know? Absolutely, call a beekeeper because it might not be around for very long. Because right. once they find a new home, they'll vote on when new scouts come back okay. from different areas. They'll vote on the best one that has the most scouts that say, yes, this is a good home. And then they'll all fly off together and go take over that place. And then that'll be their new home. And hopefully it's not a neighbor's wall or an old barn. So you want to get them into a box so you can use those bees. Very cool. Yep, so when they get a little more grumpy, they're gonna start buzzing and you can see they're getting a little bit more aggressive, but I'm not wearing any gloves right. and neither are you because- I feel brave. Yeah, you can wear gloves, but what I've found is I'm a little more clumsy with gloves. So yeah. if I move very slowly and deliberately, the bees aren't really gonna sting me that often. Right, so if you, if a bee is buzzing you, it's not really angry at you unless you swat at it. Exactly. I usually say, oh, you you must look like a flower. That's kind of a compliment, right? The bee right. is checking you out. Right. Um, I've noticed that when I wear very bright blue shirts, I'll have a bumblebee or a honeybee will come check me out because they really mm. love the color blue. Okay. So yeah, if a bee is just buzzing by or it's on a flower, you can get so close, um, they won't sting you. They're only really going to sting you dark fuzzy clothing, rapid movements. If I wave my hands, uh -huh. see how they jump on me like uh -huh. that? They're just getting ready in case something's gonna try to take this brood and sure. eat it. And so you can see if I move slowly, those bees aren't doing anything. If I move fast, they're gonna jump up on my hands. Sure. So, so and you said the hive is really warm inside? Yeah, so you can actually, oh, yeah, you can as long as you move nice and is. slow, yep. you can feel the warmth that is from those bees just moving around their, their muscles and generating heat. And they will do that all winter long. When they're raising brood, they'll bring the temperature up to the mid nineties. When they're not raising brood, it'll still be around 70 degrees. Okay. All winter long. So people don't really need to be too scared of bees because they're for the most part pretty gentle. Exactly. And they might buzz by and check you out, but as you can see, you're covered in bees and they're literally just licking up a little extra sugar or they like some, my heat. <laughs> yeah, they like to hang out because we're warm right now. Yeah. And as long as we're not moving rapidly and, and we're here and interacting with them very calmly, mm -hmm. those bees are going to react very little to us. All right. So now I'm going to move and I'm going to put their food back on. And you can see oh. when I talk, they're smelling carbon dioxide from my breath. Sure. And that's the other thing that bees don't like. So that's why if you drive a mower or an engine or something like that, or if I go like this. Wow. They really don't like carbon dioxide. And so that means that's an animal breathing on them that's gonna come and eat them. And so they react like you, you saw there, very aggressively to carbon dioxide. Interesting, I didn't know that. And so if you smell right now, what they're releasing is called an alarm pheromone. Oh, yeah. It'll smell like bananas. Bananas, yep. Okay. And so the alarm pheromone, I can mask it a little bit with the smoke to calm them down. Sure. And also I will never eat a banana before I go near my honeybees because it's close enough in smell to bananas that if you even shake a banana peel in front of a hive, they'll freak out. Really? I did not know that. So I'm going to gently put them back. Make sure you're not to breathe too hard on them. Because remember, I want to be as little like a bear as possible. Okay. 
So I'm not gonna be huffing and puffing, furry clothes and rapid movements. <laughs> and I'm gonna button them back up. And then they're ready to be sent out and go find some flowers. Awesome, thank you. Thanks for joining us for Storytime in the Pollinator Garden. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us, either the Lincoln Libraries or the University of Nebraska Lincoln Bee Lab. And remember to help all pollinators, you don't have to have honeybees or build anything special. You just need to plant plants in your yard and not spray as many pesticides. Thank you again, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.